Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to look at sequences and convergence. To do this, we split the video into four main parts. The first quarter gives a quick recap of sequences to some of you that maybe haven't studied them recently. We then look at the intuition behind why a sequence may converge. Hopefully this will help us understand the formal definition better when we move on to looking at it in the third section of this video. Then finally, we look at a simple example of when a sequence converges to a value. So what actually is a sequence? Quite simply, a sequence is just an ordered list of numbers. This list can either have a finite amount of terms or an infinite amount of terms. As these terms are ordered, it means that each entry has a position. In this case, we have that the first entry is 3, the second entry is 6, the third entry is 0, and the fourth entry is 8. Sometimes the value of the entry relates to the position in the list. For example, 2, 4, 6, and 8, where we can see that each entry is just double its position. Here, we can write to the nth term formula, i.e. the value at an nth position, as 2n. Here, we've used the notation that a is our arbitrary sequence, and n denotes the position. Having a look at another quick example, say that we have the nth term n squared, we see that we get the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. When we start to think about sequences and convergence, we mainly consider infinite sequences, because finite sequences just converge to their final value. The easiest way to start to understand convergence is by sketching our sequences. To do this, we're going to put our index value on the x-axis and our sequence value on the y-axis. We then sketch our sequence by putting a little point where each value of our list is. As it's pretty impossible to sketch infinity, we've just put these fading out dots here to imply that they go off to infinity. So what we expect to see for convergence is that after a certain point, our values will all stay within a certain range of each other. Let's say after position big N, then all values after this point are within some arbitrary range epsilon of each other. So now if we've said that a sequence converges, this kind of implies it converges to a value. So this value we'd expect to be that midpoint of the range epsilon. Let's call this value a, another little a but without the subscript. Now this is the limit of the sequence, again, i.e. the value that the sequence converges to. So now that we've kind of started to grasp at what it might mean for a sequence to converge, let's start to build up a formal definition and see how it relates to this diagram. So firstly, we establish that epsilon has to be greater than zero, because obviously we can't have a negative range because that just wouldn't make sense. So now that we've got the epsilon value, the next thing we need to do is find this big N. So if we remember back, this big N denotes the first index value where every single index after it is within this epsilon range. In more formal terms, we write this as for all little n greater than big N implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon. So there we go. We've got the formal definition of what it means for a sequence a n to converge to a limit a. So let's quickly recap that definition. Well, we have that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big N such that for all little n greater than big N, the absolute value of the sequence a n minus the limit a is less than epsilon. Now that we've established the definition, let's have a look at a relatively simple example to help further our understanding. So the question we have is that we need to show that the sequence a n equals 2 plus 1 over n plus 1 converges to a limit a equals 2. So the first thing we're going to do is pull out the key information. So that is the actual sequence itself, so the 2 plus 1 over n plus 1, and what the limit is, which is the a equals 2. So now we need to use our definition. We can start by substituting the limit in, and then our sequence. We can see here that in the absolute value the 2's will cancel, so we're just left with the absolute value of 1 over n plus 1. So here's where it gets a bit more tricky. What we need to do is show that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists this big N such that that last statement is true. So the first thing we're going to do is just let epsilon be greater than 0. And then what's left to do is find this big N. So how do we go about finding this big N? Well, the first thing we're going to do is look at that last little expression. The absolute value of 1 over n plus 1 is less than epsilon. 
Let's start by looking at the absolute value. Well, we know this is positive because the index value little n is positive itself. So we know it's going to be less than the non-absolute value term. Then because big N is less than little n, it means that the fraction 1 over big N plus 1 will actually be greater than the fraction 1 over little n plus 1. Then once again, this fraction 1 over big N plus 1 is actually less than the fraction 1 over big N because obviously n plus 1 is greater than n, so it's going to be smaller. Looking back at the top, what we had to do was find a big N such that that second bit of statement holds. Well, if we just let big N be equal to 1 over epsilon, we'll see that this last term is actually just equal to epsilon. Now, because we've got this chain, we can see that just taking out the middle ones, we had the absolute value of 1 over little n plus 1 is less than epsilon. So now we've actually shown that for all epsilon greater than zero, that there exists this n equals one over epsilon, such that that final statement holds. So there we go. We've shown that for the sequence a n equals two plus one over n plus one, that it converges to the limit a equals two. We've shown this using that formal definition we've got in the bottom right corner. So just to recap, what we did is we let epsilon be greater than zero. Then we looked at that final statement, that absolute value, and figured out what we needed the big N term to be so that the whole statement holds. So there we go. We've had a look at sequences and convergence. I hope you enjoyed it today. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe. And if you found it extra useful, please share. Thanks everyone. See you next time.